pour à peu près 28 minutes. Fait que Michel, tu me fais les signes. Oui. Tu me vois comme ça? Oui. D'accord. OK, in 5, 4, 3. Le Devoir called you one of the best actors or actresses of the équipe generation, l'équipe, mm -hmm. and the Pierre Dagenet period. Can you tell me a bit about Pierre Dagenet and l'équipe? Oh, yes. Uh, we were all uh, very young actors at that time, uh, but we had the feeling that we didn't work enough uh, at the time. Uh, work enough rehearsals, you know. Shall we cut and take that phone call? Mm -hmm. Isn't that up? Ça roule dans 5, 4, 3, 2. In Le Devoir, they called you one of the best actors of the L'Equipe period. Who started L'Equipe, actually? And can you tell me about it? Yes, oh yes. It was a very wonderful period uh, for us. We were all a group, uh, maybe about mm, ten, eight or ten young actors. But uh, we used to play... Um, Come on, dit, uh, 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 professional theater, but we thought it was a, a play a week, you know, it was short, we didn't have time to rehearse enough. So we gathered around Pierre Dagenet, who was a, a kind of a genius, you know, and uh, he wanted to have a group, uh, uh, a troupe, uh, who could uh, uh, play uh, plays that were different than those uh, of the professional theatre. And uh, so uh, we gathered all together and uh, we had lots of uh, fun. And uh, evidently the critic uh, was very kind to us, and it gave us, whew, you know, the l'air d'aller. Eh? We're going to come back to that a bit later. Yes. But uh, I'm going to touch on some other things, and we'll come back to them again, too. Mm -hmm. You played the third Marie-Ange, uh, Ticoc. Um, the role was apparently written for Muriel Guilbeault. Yes. Uh, but it was originally done by Olivette Thibault yes. at the Monument National. Can you tell me about that? Why? Yes. How come? Well, because uh, the, the play evidently was uh, meant for uh, Muriel, but uh, when they decided to have the première, uh, she was sick. So uh, the play was, the part was offered at Olivette Thibault. Olivette Thibault was pregnant. So she couldn't play uh, all the time. A after uh, the first run, because the play was played in um, uh, spring, springtime, but uh, after that, uh, in fall, they came back, but with uh, Muriel, who was uh, better. So, I mean, her health was better, so she could uh, take the, the, pl uh, the, the part. After a few, uh, I don't know how many uh, shows, uh, Gracien Gelina decided to have the play played in English. And uh, so um, apparently Muriel didn't speak well enough en English, anglais, <laughs> English, and um, uh, the, her friend uh, who was, um, oh mon Dieu, comment elle s'appelle? Uh, ah, j'ai oublié son nom. Uh, voyons. The, 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 the partner of, uh, of Marie-Ange, her cousin. Uh, so, so he hired me for the part of Marie-Ange and um, Denise Pelletier for the part of Germaine. And that's how we played it in English. Okay. And after in French, because we made a, a, a tour uh, fr uh, in Canada. You toured Canada uh, with, yeah. this, with this play. Yeah. All the way to the West Coast? Where did yes, you know? that's it. Where Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. This was the period of the Dominion Drama Festival and all of that national effort, right, of theater. It, uh, the national, uh, the, the Dominion, I don't know what, that was uh, much before, uh, long before. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes. But uh, w what we did had nothing to do with any kind of festival or, no, no, no. How did you get on the road? Across Canada, was there a circuit of theaters, or uh, did you have government help? Well, did you have? Did what? you have help of a government ministries or things like that in those days? Or? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. You let the managers manage, and you acted. Oh, you bet! <laughs> Since I was very young, I didn't care for that. Can we talk about Odette Oligny? Ah, oh, yes, my mother. 
can you give me a, an idea of, of her life and times? Why did she leave France? Well, uh, she got uh, married with a Canadian soldier who was uh, my father. And um, they stayed a few years in France. They had a girl, my elder sister. And, uh, but uh, came a time when my father wanted very much to uh, introduce his new wife and new child to his family. And so they decided to come here. And my mother fell in love with Quebec and she never went back to live. She went back for a trip, but she never uh, went back. She was a marvelous uh, person. Uh, she was a writer. She was a newspaper woman. And, uh, oh yes. I understand that she would eventually write in uh, Le Canadien, is that right? Le Canada. Le Canada. Le Canada. Le Canadien. And she has a cultural, as a cultural writer, sort of uh, magazine, uh, kids' books, Oh yes, she wrote books. They are over there. I'm I'm going to have them. Uh, comment on dit, uh, relié, uh, yeah, bound. Yeah. Uh, so they they are there. I was well, I was sick, so I I couldn't go there. But uh, I will go and have all her uh, books. What was it about you growing up with her that gave you an inter gave you interest in theater? Oh, oh I don't. She never. Um, she had three girls. Huh? She never imposed anything. But uh, she was a marvelous mother because evidently she was working. Eh? She was a newspaper woman. She would leave home every day and go and work and come back. And she was not there all the time. But when she was there, she was there so much. She would talk to us uh, about her day, who she met, uh, what she did, and it was extraordinary for us. She was a very, um, on dit, cultivated. Whenever I never, I, I have a feeling that when I was a young child, I never had to look in a dictionary. I just had to ask my mother. I would say, oh, what does that mean? It means that. And I, I had confidence, you know, and I, I never was wrong in having confidence in her. She taught me how to speak. I never had any lessons of uh, uh, diction, diction. Bon, jamais, never. Uh, she was my professor. She taught me when I was, oh, maybe three or four years old. I, could, I was not uh, uh, reading or writing, she taught me Les Fables de La Fontaine by heart, and I would recite that. It was lots of fun. That's uh, a bit of theater right there, eh? So yeah, and also she um, would bring us, my sister and I, not together, one uh, after the other, at the theater. There was a theater at Le Stella, Théâtre Stella, on St. Denis Street. And uh, there was concerts also, she would bring us there. Um, dance. Uh, and uh, so, yes, it was uh, fun. Uh, we were not very rich, but we always had books, lots, lots of books. We could read anything we wanted. So it was the cinema, was that allowed, for, I think it was closed to children, right, in Quebec, because of a great fire? Oh, yes, but we had some, oh, I never forget that, some at school on the Friday. But it was, uh, you know those, uh, you know, I don't know if you know, <laughs> those short films of Charlie Chaplin. We loved it. It cost 10 cents. Ah, <gasps> it was, oh, we loved it, yeah. Why were you not allowed to go to the movies as a child in Quebec? I don't know, because the religion forbid uh, children to go to, to cinema. But I, I personally, I didn't uh, care so much for that. I loved uh, Charlie Chaplin or uh, the uh, Harold Lloyd and uh, films like that. Oh, we loved that. Do you remember what you saw at the Stella? Theater, exactly. Oh, no, I don't remember. Uh, they were uh, dramas, you know, uh, played by La Troupe uh, Barry Duquesne. 
It was Monsieur Barry, who was a great actor, and Monsieur Duquesne, and they were directors of that uh, group, that troupe, troupe, troupe. And uh, so I saw them, yes, many, many times. Forget the names, forget the titles. What is it you remember otherwise about it? As a little girl, what, looking around, the evening out, looking at that stage. Oh, I thought uh, they were uh, people from another planet. You know, I, I, I never thought that I could, I could do something like that. You know, yes. Oh. You still have the feeling too, eh? the this, this same uh, magnetism eh? for the theater. Uh, for the theater, not for the actors. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how about l'arcade? Ah yes, l'arcade um, was a very important uh, theater. It was France Film, and uh, they had uh, they decided to open a theater there, and uh, we had one play every week and we played 14 times every day a matinee eh? so it was for 14 shows a week and uh, if w we were hired for t two consecutive uh, shows we would have to rehearse during the evening after the the second show we would go and and rehearse for the next show but uh, you know how to uh, you defend yourself when it's, it's like that. You have one week you play, you had to learn your lines. Evidently, at that time, I was not playing the leads, but I had parts uh, interesting enough. What do you do with these lines when the, the play is over? Oh, it's gone like that, except for um, a classical. Uh, play. Then uh, I could, uh, in a minute, uh, the, the, the script would come back to me. But the other plays, no, and it's better because your memory would be uh, uh, full of uh, the script. Uh, no, no, you have to forget that as quick as possible. You played Musset, Racine, oh, all yes. those things. Yeah. Yes. Some people would say L'Arcade was, uh, it incited many people to lay the foundations of a national theater. Oh, work. no, not L'Arcade. No. Oh, no, they never. Oh, well, yes, they did a few creations of uh, uh, Quebecois um, writers, but uh, most of the time they were plays from France. But Boulevard Theater, eh, it was it was not, uh, uh, oh, comment on dit, it was not a theater, um, voyons, a théâtre, um, well, you know, uh, int intellectual uh, theater? No, not at all. No, classical theater? Never. No, no, no. It was a commercial enterprise. France Film was not a, a, a mécène. Eh? Je sais pas comment vous dites a mécène. How do you say? Mécène. No? Mécène. Uh, somebody who gives money to. Oh. Uh, yes. No, no, no. No, no, they, want, they wanted. It's a business. It was a business. That's all. That's why we created the keep. Because we thought that uh, uh, we didn't have time to rehearse as much as we would have liked to. So we said if we had a, our own group, we could maybe rehearse a month or a month and a half, any time that we feel we need. There we couldn't do that. And the A-Keep was a, a little bit, how much longer after L'Arcade? Why did you leave L'Arcade? Uh, were, were you tired I, of it? Or? I did something else. I, I didn't leave L'Arcade. No, no. I played a lot at L'Arcade because I think, and I'm quite sure I'm not wrong, that all the people who uh, played at L'Arcade uh, acquired uh, an indispensable experience. Hmm? Uh, you have to keep in mind that at that time, nobody had any school. Eh? There was no school. There were a few um, uh, professors of diction, how to speak, that's all. Uh, there was no uh, school of theater. So you learned by working, you know. 
uh, many, many of uh, my uh, the, of the group, you know, there was a uh, uh, Giselle Schmidt, Janine Suto, uh, uh, Jean Ducep, uh, 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 all those young actors played at l'arcade. It was the only play where you could try to do something, you know. If I can step back a little bit, yeah. I have some names that are before your time in a way, but maybe you have some reaction to them. Uh, Antoinette Giroux, do you know who that is? Oh yes, she was a, a Antoinette and her sister Germaine, they were both the, the, the lead actors at l'arcade. Oh yes. Uh, Jacques Auger, Laurette Larocque, uh, Jean yes, Pay, uh, yes, 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 Jacques Auger, yes. Mm -hmm. I played with him uh, uh, later because he was playing the part of the um, uh, lawyer in the Yesterday the Children Were Dancing. I played uh, with Gracien and, uh, so I, and I knew him because I played a lot with him on uh, radio. <coughs> <coughs> and his wife, uh, was uh, Laurette Auger, and, uh, but her uh, writing name, uh, Nick, pen, name. Uh, pen name, oui, c'est ça. Pen name was, um, voyons, Jean Desprez, and she wrote uh, lots of things for radio, and I played with her, for her. Yeah. We will get back to radio, but uh, the Montreal Repertory Theatre was another interesting mm -hmm. period. A fellow named Mario Dugliani. <coughs> 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 Do you remember Julianne? <coughs> Pardon. Ça, vous allez couper, hein? um, oui, uh, yes, I, I knew him very well. Uh, I was a, a very young uh, student, and Mario Giuliani would uh, uh, direct a show on, on the top of uh, La Montagne uh, on summertime. He uh, directed um, Cyrano de Bergerac, and uh, he, he needed a figurant. How do you say figurant? Uh, uh, players. Yes, uh, two, extras. Two. extras. And I was uh, an extra uh, in Cyrano de Bergerac, so I knew him uh, quite well. Did you know about him? He ended up at a, an, at a, in an internment camp, eh? because he was Italian, apparently. Yes, during the war. Yes. Yes. How did the war change uh, the theater scene? Did it continue uninterrupted? Oh, it, it continued in in, in interrupted. No, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Pierre Gauvreau. Ah, oh, oui, Pierre what Gauvreau. What does that mean to you? He ah, was one of lot. the first automatist. But yes. he was also a dancer actor. Dancer? A dancer actor, Pierre Gauvreau, was ah. a dancer actor, and later he did television and painting. Oh, yes. But he started oh, yeah. as a dancer actor, according ah, to my research. Dancer? I, d I never saw him dance, but I, I, I know he, 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 was, uh, he could you know, be an actor, but uh, he, uh, he is a great writer mm -hmm. and a painter uh, extraordinaire. I saw a show of his uh, work. Lately, he's, he's wonderful. A writer of plays, did he write? Plays? Yes, yes, he played, he, he wrote, oh, maybe the biggest success on TV. Uh, yes, and I played for him, I have pictures of that. Okay. Oui. Uh, the Stella, the Stella had such players as Mini Destri, Antoine. Mini Desti. Desti. Oui. What does that mean to you? Did you work with her? On radio. But uh, never uh, on uh, on stage. Antoinette, oh yes, Antoinette, as I t I told you before, Antoinette and her sister Germaine, they were the lead uh, at l'arcade, so I played with them. We Marta Thierry. Oh oui, yes. With Fred Berry. And yes. Barry yes, I played for a b uh, all of the. Uh, uh, Fred Barry was playing the father in Ticoc. So I, I played with him, um, and I, I saw him play many, many times. Um, uh, Henri Deglin was a writer uh, and a, uh, an actor, and he would, every um, summer, he would uh, p p make a play out of his series on radio, and we would tour during the summer. Uh, we would tour in Quebec, and. Uh, that's how I met him, and I played with him, for him, I worked for him. And 
so you were doing radio and theater at the same oh, yes. time. Oh, right? yes, yes, what yes, is, yes. Did you need radio to make a living? Did it help? Oh, yes. <gasps> because we were paid so little uh, uh, for theater because we had to pay for our clothes. Uh, shoes, clothes, uh, hair, uh, everything, makeup, and we were paid uh, so so little. Ma'am, you, we, we were not paid so much on radio, but we had many, uh, many, many. There were oh so many, many radio shows. So we would go from this station to the other, and uh, so we could manage. We didn't make money, but we could, you know. Uh, you must remember your first radio drama. Oh, no, my God, no. No, because I made radio when I was small, you know. Uh, I don't know, I was maybe eight or ten or so. So uh, the first radio show I did, I don't even remember what it was. No, I don't remember. When I was adult. No, I don't remember. Was this educational plays for schools, or was it uh, entertainment plays that you did most on radio? On radio I, I did it once. Uh, it was no, it was uh, I, no, it was a, a usual um, thing, you know. Where was the uh, location of the radio studios? Uh, there, I did that at CKAC. CKAC. It was on Saint Catherine West. Have fond memories of working on radio? Or oh yes. Who were the uh, the stars of the radio stage? The Me. <laughs> <laughs> now I was really a very very much uh, working on radio. I loved it, and uh, we had uh, wonderful directors like Gimofet. We had authors, you know, uh, marvelous authors. So it was, it was marvelous uh, to play for people who had only their ears to get what we wanted to say. Because they, you know, when uh, television came, we imposed our face, our height, our, uh, our body to the people. Uh, but when they heard you, they could imagine whatever they wanted through your voice, through the way you would express the sentiment, the, the, the feelings. It was marvelous. Mm -hmm. But on TV, I loved it too. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. But as for radio, was there a pressure for uh, orthography, for speaking comme il faut, or was oui. there some flexibility, the new emergence of... Uh, no, no. Usually, at that time, thank God, uh, everybody spoke well, which doesn't mean, uh, um, Isabelle, you know, the, I hear people saying, parlez pointu. Uh, no, on parlait pas pointu. We didn't speak pointu. We didn't say moi puis toi. Huh? Uh, we said moi et toi. Uh, no. Uh, and no, no author would is write things that would command uh, a discutable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When did the television begin the first time? Uh, 52 the, about. 52? Mm -hmm. And what was the, uh, the first project you did on television? Ah, yes. Now? I did. Uh, I was lucky because uh, I was very much interested in uh, uh, television. And uh, they had what they called experimental shows and uh, I did a series of those uh, experimental shows which were called C'est la vie and after C'est la loi uh, and after well they decided to have a series you know uh, like Les Plouf like uh, all the others Madame, uh, Madame Auger uh, Jean Després had one qui s'appelait uh, called uh, joie de vivre. Wait, oui. I played the mother there, and uh, after there was uh, La Rue des Pignons, which I played for about twelve years. That was uh, live, huh? Oh yes, sir. Yes, live. Is that the same thing as a live theater? The live camera? Oh, is it? Is it, is it 
does it feel like um, the camera is like an audience? Oh no, never, theater, never, different? never, never. Why? Oh, because it's completely different. The the the, the mean is so different. At a camera, you can. If you just open a bit your eyes, it's a, it comes up on theater. You have to make it much, much bigger, broader. You have more liberty. Were you ready for that adjustment, uh, or did you feel you were overacting? At I suppose we were all overacting, because we were all uh, theater people. And I suppose that we were overacting. So you uh, adjusted that, right? Oh, yeah, rapidly. Quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Pierre Durand, does that name mean something? Oh, yes. yes. What is your, any recollection? Uh, uh, well, I remember uh, he was a old man when I was uh, beginning in that uh, business. Uh, he, he was a Frenchman. Uh, in, he played lots of uh, parts. Uh, I played with him only on radio. But uh, he would play the the fathers, the grandfathers, etc. He was a very good actor. Who was your director in radio? The major director. The major directors were, as I told you, Guy Moffat was marvelous. Uh, y avait Bruno Paradis. Um, oh, many others. I, I'm terrible with names. If you if you name them to me, I'd say yes or no. But. Uh, it's, it's quite hard for me to, to remember the names of all the people I knew at that time. Do you remember Henri Letondal? Oh, oui! Tell me about him, please. Henri Letondal was a, a director of... A, he was directing plays for La Cad. Mm. Yes, and uh, he, I played under his direction many, many times at La Cad, yes. L'Académie Canadienne d'Art Dramatique, does that make you... L'Académie? Canadian Dramatic? No. Don't just make it no, no, no. It must have been a minor project of his. I don't know what, what it's all about. Should we change tapes uh, right now? Or? Okay. Henri Letondal, we were talking about him before, with Léon Mercier, uh, Mercier Gouin, and his wife. Madame. Uh, Madame uh, Léon Mercier. Oh, yeah, Léon Mercier Gouin and his wife Yvette Olivier Mercier Gouin. Oui. They completed the collaboration for l'Union Artistique Canadienne d'Antoinette Giroux. Does this ring a bell to you? Oh, euh, je pense que c'est tout, tout mélangé, là, ça. Non, c'est pas ça du tout, hein. Oh, non? Oh, non, vous non, non. Calculer? Non, non, ben, je sais pas. Euh, oh, in English, sorry. Oh, no. Est-ce qu'on peut juste? OK, in uh, five, four, three, two, one. That was perfect, because it was not on camera. So, <laughs> Some of the people who started at Black Kid Me or, or L'Ecole, I'm not sure which one, Ferdinand Biondi, do you know who that is? Ferdinand Biondi. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. I don't even know that he had a school. Uh, he was a radio man. He was a very important man uh, on CKAC. Yeah. Um, Camille Ducharme. What are you Are memories you? of that? Yes, I played with him on radio many, many times. He was a charming... How about Sita Rides? Oh, yes, Sita Rides also. I know her very well. Do you have any memories particularly of these people and their achievements? I know that uh, Sita played, uh, she, she left, uh, she was from a French uh, family and uh, she went to France uh, and after she came back and I knew her when she came back from France and she played uh, Les Glons. And I saw her play that, and I, oh, I thought she was marvelous. She was beautiful. She was marvelous, yes. And she's a splendid person as a human being. She's wonderful, yes. What did you know about Les Compagnons de Saint-Laurent? Ah, Les Compagnons de Saint-Laurent. I uh, used to go and see them play. And um, after... Uh, I think it was about the last year of the existence of Les Compagnons, Le Père Legault, uh, who was the director, asked me to play a wonderful play uh, from uh, Garcia Lorca called La Savetière Prodigieuse. And I played with them uh, for the first and last time. Yes. They made a big contribution to, to uh, 
Scolaire. Enormous, enormous, yes, because uh, the Père Legault uh, uh, succeeded in having around him uh, Jean Gascon, Jean Louis Roux, uh, mon Dieu, uh, Georges Groux, uh, Jean Loubis, sûrement plusieurs, les, uh, Hélène Loisel, uh, uh, Jean Coutu, et, et, all of them became stars, you know, after. Uh, They played with uh, le, le Père Legault. They had a place in Outremont and Vaudreuil. Uh, oui. Opinion de Saint yes. I didn't know them at that time. Okay. No. I know because uh, I heard about them, but I, I, I was not part of uh, Les Compagnons. They apparently had their own uh, publishing um, label, you know, uh, a couple of theaters. Père Emile Legault was. Uh, Could you describe him? Well, what was with him? What was he doing in the theater? You know, he was the director. Uh, uh, w I don't. I well, think I don't understand I'm just what you're saying. As a religious, he was a religious. Yes, man. he was a religious. Uh, was it? Uh, how was? Was he very independent in his uh, directing approach? Did he? Uh, was he permissive with the themes? Or was it a conservative sort of church? Um, I think I have no opinion whatsoever. Uh, no, he, he began by uh, directing uh, uh, Catholic plays, you know, uh, plays that would, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, it's, it's so hard to express uh, things in, in uh, language which is not yours. Um, he, uh, yes, but, but after he, he, he He couldn't play always that kind of plays, so he had others, uh, and sometimes he was criticized because they thought he, he would go a little bit too far, but he didn't care, and uh, I think he was right. He was a, a great man. Excellent. Some other people that worked with him, uh, François Bertrand? Oui, François Bertrand. François Bertrand, c'était euh, un homme merveilleux. Il, euh, c'était surtout un homme de radio. Yeah, radio man. Ah yes, ah yes. Say that in English again. Hey, oh yes. He, <laughs> he was uh, mostly a radio man, but he would play like that for les, les compagnons. Yes. Uh, Judith Jasmine? Oh, Judith Jasmine, yes. She was a great actress also. I never played with, a, with her, but I played for her because she began um, uh, directing on radio and she hired me many, many times. She gave me such good advices, you know. Uh, yes, I loved her. And after, she, she, she was a, a newspaper woman over... Uh, TV, uh, making uh, interviews and uh, uh, over uh, overseas, <laughs> in France and uh, everywhere. She, she was very, very admirable. Uh, yes. There was a, do you know the critic Louis-Marcel Raymond? Does this ring a bell to you? Louis-Marcel Raymond? Mm -hmm. he, he was a critic? I must not know him very well because I have to ask you his name. Uh, yes, yeah, possible. Where, which? Uh, I don't know. He was like a, a critic associated with uh, Les Compagnons de Saint Laurent, and I, I really I, want to know this. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, but the, also, two authors, André Legault and Félix Leclerc. Oh, Félix Leclerc, yes. What kind of contribution did Félix Leclerc make over? A 30 years, 40 years, oh, in well, a sentence. Felix, Felix uh, would have liked so much. He, he wrote marvelous uh, poems, songs, but I think that deep in his heart he would have preferred to be a great author of plays. I created his first play called uh, uh, Voyons, uh, oh, je me rappelle plus même le titre. La, la première pièce de, de Félix, the first play of Félix. And w how do you remember that play? Huh? Good one or? Oh well, I loved it because I was the only woman, and it was six sketches, and I was playing all that, so I loved it. Huh? Oui, oui, j'ai adoré ça. There was no problem for women and women's roles, eh, in Quebec theater. Lots of it, eh? Lots of work. I've noticed women's names. We were, we were not very many, you know, when, uh, when I began. Uh, maybe we were, we were 
playing the, the, the same or plua, the same type of role. Maybe we were ten. Actually, they are not ten, they are uh, hundreds. It's different. It was not... Uh, <coughs> so there was a lot of work. Oh, yes. Tell, I mean, me, tell me a typical day. You told me you had a family and a car. What were the things you were juggling? You know, what were the elements of your life? How did you pull it all together? Well, <laughs> you're, it's funny. Uh, we, we were very busy uh, girls, you know, all of us. Uh, the, the ones who, uh, uh, who could uh, have the chance to work. Well, we would have radio in the morning. We would come early in the morning and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And after there was the show, and then we would run to another station. Maybe uh, it was Radio Canada, and after it was CKC or CHL, uh, CKVL in Verdun, and we would uh, go everywhere. In the afternoon, we would play at l'arcade. Let's say in the afternoon. And then uh, maybe we would have a, a show on radio uh, during the time of the dinner, and we would go back to the theater and have. And after rehearsing, we would, we were working like mad, you know. But we loved it. You have to be madly in love with what you do. Uh, you yes, what you do to to do what we did. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's impossible. But it took some courage because, uh, the, you know, the money, it was, you were saying, oh, it was terrible. No money. No money at all. No, no, we were, <laughs> no, no one uh, was rich. No, never. Oh, no, no, no. It was. But we didn't even think of it. We didn't think of it. We were so glad because it's, uh, well, I think that the most important thing in life is to like what you do. If you don't like it, even if you're, you're paid a, a million, it's, it's not interesting. How did you um, amuse yourselves out, outside of the theater? Were you like a family, the theater community? We had a, f a few friends. We, we liked, uh, after the show, evidently, to go and have a bite somewhere and talk and talk. And uh, sometimes also we would gather in uh, the, the apartment of one of the companions and uh, we would, uh, you know, eat and talk and listen to music and sing and uh, dance and uh, whatever. <laughs> you told me about uh, a place, Chez a restaurant. Ah, yes. Which restaurant? Un restaurant chez son père. Restaurant, yes. Tell me about that. Yes, chez son père was a restaurant. I think it was on Saint Antoine Street. And uh, uh, many, many actors. But uh, 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 that was uh, years after my debut, you know, my beginning. Um, yes, we would go very often there to have a good meal. Yeah. And who was the guy who ran the place? Uh, Monsieur Bouilleux. He was a Frenchman, uh, marvelous, and uh, he loved to, um, uh, comment on dit, uh, uh, la chasse. Uh, uh, venison. Hein? Venison, we call it? When no, no, mais chasser. Uh, hunting. hunting. Oh, yeah. He loved hunting, and uh, every time, every once in a while, at the uh, fall, he would come with a... Uh, Je sais pas moi, euh, euh, chevreuil and uh, things like that. It, oh, he would make us a, a good meal out of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, where was I at? And otherwise, socially, um, did there was people marrying each other in the theater, falling in love? Yes, it it that? it happened. Not uh, with me, but it happened. Oh yes, oh yes. Some uh, got married and. Uh, Does the name? Um, Hector Charlin means something to you, Compagnon de la Petite Seine. Uh, no, Hector Charlin was a, a man, I know him, because everybody knew him. I, I saw him in my school. He came and he, he talked uh, at the children, the, yeah, and I was there. And he was making radio also, and uh, probably stage work, but I, it was not my time, you know, I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. D during the wartime, which is again, 
Mm. C'était, oui, à peu oh, près, le même temps. Oh, oui. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, there were some Jewish refugees left Germany and so forth. We had Ruth Sorel, Ludmilo Pitueff. Yes. Yeah. Did they make a large contribution or a small contribution here on the local street? Here, unfortunately, they were Ludmila Pitoev. I knew him. I knew her um, when she arrived. But uh, she, she was a, a genius, that woman. She was, uh, and it was uh, Le Père Legault uh, of Les Compagnons who uh, hired her. And uh, but the people were not ready for that kind. She was a. Um, Splendid actress, and she was. I'll tell you a little anecdote. I um, saw that she was playing Maison de Poupée, uh, la pièce de yeah, Ibsen. Doll's house, yeah. Yes, doll, Doll's uh, House, and uh, by Ibsen. And I, I went to the theater and I bought two tickets. It was at the Saint Denis Theater. Two days before the premiere, I was called by Le Théâtre Saint-Denis, telling me, uh, come and take your money. Uh, we sold about 40 tickets, you know, so it's impossible to give a show. So it tells you how much, uh, how little, no success at all she, she had. But I knew her again, I met her again a few years later, not very long after that, uh, she went to work for MGM in, uh, at Metro Goldwyn May in Hollywood, and uh, I was hired to do post synchronization for MGM, and we met there. And I saw her many, many times. We used to, because we had to take from Hollywood to go to Culver City, we had to take a, a, a bus. And she would take the same bus. She was uh, not making synchronization. She was, uh, come on, the, uh, um, coach for young actors of MGM Studio. And she told me at that time. She said, "My little Uget, for the first time in my life, I am saving money." Oh, she was extraordinary. Yes. In that business, it is extraordinary to save money. Mm. She came up with Yul Brenner at one point. Yes. In Montreal. Do you, yes. Do you remember that? What was he yes. for? Is that the vrai process de Jeanne d'Arc? Je crois que oui. I, I think that it's that, but I... Did you go to see that? Yes. Could you tell me... Uh, who I, was this Yul Brenner? Tell me about him. Uh, well, he was a quite handsome man, and he was not... Uh, il avait encore, uh, he had uh, hair, not uh, too much, but uh, it's not the same Yul Brenner that we saw who became a big star uh, on, on the screen. But he was a very elegant. Uh, was he, he? Did Yul Brenner do that in French? That role? I suppose so. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. I don't. You know, it uh, uh, things like that. Uh, you uh, when uh, you're asked about it. Did you see that? You say yes. What did you think? I. It's so funny. You. Say, I don't. Uh, did he speak French? Yes, he did speak French. Yes. Sure. There were some brief troops like. Uh, for a short while, these existed. Yes, Comedie many. De Montréal. Ah, yes, La Comédie de Montréal. See, they lasted maybe, what, uh, a season or two? Because, uh, yes. Uh, that was Paul Longley. Do you have any yes, oh, him? yes, I, re I remember him. I worked for him lots. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes, he was uh, very um, entrepreneur. Um, he was interested in radio, he was interested in cinema, he was interested in theatre. But uh, when he lost too much money, well, he stopped everything. Uh, Jean Doucep started uh, Le Jeune Colombier. <coughs> Does that ring a bell, Le Jeune Colombier? No. No. Uh, of course, uh, L'Equipe de Pierre Dagenet. About how long did that exist, L'Equipe? L'Equipe, I would say about six, seven years. Mm -hmm. and if, about. How would you uh, describe it? Like uh, six, seven desperate years, six, seven happy years? Oh, happy years. Happy years. Oh, yes, happy years. For the first th time, we had the feeling that we would do uh, the good a good job, you know, and it's it's quite important. The players included Yvette Brandamont. 
Yes. Antoinette Giroux. Oui, probablement. M probably, yes. Muriel Gilbo. Yes, Muriel Gilbo. Would you remain friends with them? In, in a, were there like circles of friends be because of the yes. you were? Yes, I, I was, uh, at the time, I was quite close to Muriel, Muriel Gilbo and me. And um, we had, um, how, how, we wanted to write, you know, we s said to ourselves, oh my God, we have to write if we want something that means something, not always uh, counting on the French authors who uh, do not express our deep uh, self. And, uh, but after, you know, uh, life is uh, funny, you know, you're close to uh, someone and uh, suddenly, psh, you go elsewhere, and the other does too. So, and your separate ways. Mm. Uh, of course, you wanted to write at a time when we needed new writing. Yeah, a lot of people did come along and wrote wonderful roles for you. You know, so uh, who? Well, I wouldn't be fair to say who were your favorite playwrights, but who were your not favorite playwrights? Who would? Who were the like least fun to play? Cocteau, Salacro, Shaw, Moliere, Shakespeare. Who was the most um, effort? I don't know how to answer to that. Uh, I think that uh, I had the, the chance uh, to, whenever I accepted to play, uh, I, I never asked for uh, work, you know, never. I was always asked, would you do this part in this play? I read the play. If the part suited me, I would accept. If not, I would refuse. I, it was a, a, a luxury. Huh? C'était un luxe. Uh, but uh, I, could, I could do it. So I never, I cannot remember of playing a play which I, in my self, uh, I would say, oh, it's awful, it's terrible. No. I have lots of admiration for some of the authors that you just mentioned. What ratio then? What a proportion? Uh, one in three, one in four that you said no to? Oh, I, I, impossible to give you, uh, you know, I don't take a note of, of all the, no, no, no. It happened that I refused, but most of the time uh, they would offer me parts, interesting parts, you know. It happened that I said, but it's not one out of three, uh, no, 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 no. When did you first get really noticed then? Uh, the first a big success with your name in the review and you brought that home and you said, look at this. Or what? What was the well, it was not my tap to uh, say, well, look at that. No, no. Uh, no, it's not my, my tap at all. But um, I had, uh, a success came quite easily for me, uh, rapidly, because as I told you a little before, I think, um, we were not very many, and I don't know why, but the first play I played at L'Arcade, for instance, I had not a big experience. I had a, a few experiences, but not a big experience. I was very young, maybe 18, 17, 18. And, um, but the critics were, you know, uh, if I... I had not a, a good head on my shoulder, I would have... Oh, they said it was a, a play by Bernstein, that I never can forget. And um, the critics said, uh, le, le, the, the play was called Le Voyage, The Trip. Uh, if uh, you go and uh, if you don't want to go to L'Arcade, go! because for that trip, because it's uh, valuable only for her. And I was playing a, a little part in, oh, my, uh, Enil, the, oh, they were so, uh, you know, they were shocked, eh, because I, un I understand. But for me, it was uh, like giving me confidence for a long, long time. And I had a big, big success also with uh, the part of Magali in Le Temps. Um, uh, comment ça s'appelait donc ça? Oh, oh, j'oublie, non, des, uh, la pièce, la, the first play uh, of uh, l'équipe. 
Euh, altitude 3200. Altitude 3200. Alors, je jouais le uh, I was playing the part of Magali and I, uh, I, it was considered as a good thing. So, I was glad. I understand that uh, l'équipe, oui. is this possible, played for Sartre himself, Louis Clos. For what? Uh, for Sartre, oh, yes, yes, yes. Louis Clos, not for him, but he was there, he came, yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I have a friend, a friend, he was, um, he was a newspaper man and he, he, went, he was invited to a dinner uh, avec, uh, with uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. Yes, he came and he saw the play. He, apparently, he, he, he was glad of it. Were you yes. in that play? No. No, 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 it was uh, Muriel and uh, I think Yvette Bradamour. The two, the two women. And that must have been uh, in the newspapers the next day, no? Because he was the great uh, author, of course. Uh, uh, in, in here? Yeah. Oh, yes, probably. I don't, uh, I don't uh, keep track of, uh, of all the plays that are played here. Refus Global. What is that? Refus Global. Does that mean that? Oui, ben c'est ça. C'est les automatistes, là, qui... Oh. Uh, ben, it's, uh, it's a refus... Um, it's uh, the, the painters who decided that they didn't want any more uh, acad academism, academism. Uh, and uh, so they globally refused everything and they wanted to paint uh, as they liked. Did, I have some names here and they I think are associated with the automatiste. Bianetra was a, something by Claude Gauvreau. Oh, Claude, oui, Claude oui. Was he in this movement? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, Claude Gauvreau. Yes, he was a very important author, yes. Yeah. And who were the bad boy authors of the time? Like the, uh, the, young, the young Turks, you know, as they say. Oh, je ne sais vraiment pas, I don't know. You think about that a minute. Muriel Guilbeau, uh, Jean Saint-Denis? Oui, Jean Saint-Denis, oui, Saint -Denis. he was an actor, yes. yes. Um, how about uh, in the Refus Global Review, Jean Mercier? Do you have any recollections of Jean Mercier? Jean Mercier. Author. Uh, oui, uh, but it doesn't ring uh, lots of bells. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Uh, Gilles Uo, no. Eno. Ah, Gilles Eno, yes. Can you tell me about Gilles Eno? Uh, not much, because he was a newspaper man. Eh? Uh, I, I didn't know him personally, no. Uh, Jean Paul Mousseau? Jean-Paul Mousseau, yes, he was a great painter, and uh, he was married uh, with the sister of uh, Muriel Guilbeault. Okay. And uh, that's it. The set designers, who were, were there some particularly very good ones coming at this time? Uh, there were not very many. There were Pelletier, il y avait Pelletier, who would, did lots of things. At l'arcade, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I think that uh, they took all the old, um, uh, the old decor uh, of, uh, and they would arrange it uh, kind of differently for this play or the other. But it was not uh, at l'équipe. Yes, we had. Ah, um, mais là, vous me demandez. Vous me demandez. You asked me something. Uh, names. Uh, the designer that uh, Jean uh, Pierre Dagenet uh, employed him, uh, it was Monsieur Pelletier. I think it was Pelletier who did uh, most of the decor of uh, of uh, Dagenet. Uh, Janine Saint Denis rings a bell. Janou. Huh? Janou Saint Denis. Yes. Did you work often? No, no. She she uh, she was the the wife of Jean Saint Denis. And uh, she, she, I don't, she, she does a poetry, uh, uh, poetry uh, evenings. I don't know. She, she that's, like, that's it. Like Thérèse Renaud. Thérèse, Thérèse Renaud, Renaud yes. yes. Did she do more than just poetry, Thérèse Renaud? Ever anything? Not Thérèse Renaud. I'm talking about Janou Saint Denis Theater. Oh. Thérèse Renaud was an actress, oh. and she was playing uh, for um, a certain. Time, you know. Marcel Sabourin, Studio d'essai du Theatre Club. Oui, ça, je, I didn't know the Centre d'essai, etc., but Marcel Sabourin is a 
charming, wonderful actor, yes, and author. He's a, a very good author, too. Did, did you ever play uh, with him in a film? In a, no, not in, in a film, never. I should, though I, I would have liked. Um, I had uh, things done on TV, I think, if I remember well, yes, at the beginning of TV. Mm-hmm. Yep. And speaking of the beginning, that's what we must do with the next tape. We have to get the beginning of the next tape.